Ok, né? What is here? <clears throat> what, what? <laughs> I'll just go for about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was asked to talk about um, what this is, and I can't, there's not a single word that I can say. So I said, I'll talk about what it isn't, which is anything you can think of it. Well, that's it. <laughs> so, when, so what is this when you don't think it's anything? Is it? Clean is just thinking of it. What is it? Can't say anything. It's just what is it? And when you think about it, does it change? Is it different? There's nothing to think about, but the, the thinking, I can make it seem like what you're thinking about is there to think about. And when that happens, what is it? Seems imaginary. Yeah, but what's imaginary? That's all. And how, how, how weird is imaginary? How amazing is imaginary? And what's imaginary made of? Where does imaginary take you? There's no where. Right. Where are you now? <clears throat> there's no place or space or me. There's just well, it's yes. not no, it's not no, it's not yes, it's... No. It can't be said. It can't be said. <clears throat> I like the way you said uh, uh, there's nothing that's negated. Just nothing that seems to be what it appears to be. Sure. But I'm used to negating and saying, no, oh, well, there's no this. <laughs> Just seeing that. This is what it is inalienably. It can't not be what it is. It's not damaged by thought. It's not damaged by belief. It's not damaged by emotional reactivity. It's not improved by openness or clarity or not identification or um, 
you know, visions of incredible infinite panoramas of lights. And that's all good. That's all aspects of what it is, not that there are aspects, and not that there's even what it is. But here we are. <clears throat> Thought conception pretends to create limits, it pretends to delimit things, it pretends to define, it pretends to to create stability, to create orientation. <clears throat> and what it actually does is create fantasies of smallness, fantasies of, of well, of, of limitedness. <clears throat> but limitedness is not an actual quality. Limitedness is not relevant. <clears throat> In actuality, absolutely nothing can be found. So if you think you're finding anything, you're just imagining it, you're pretending, you're playing a game with yourself. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, this is a chair, this is a room, these are people, this is a spiritual talk, supposedly, whatever that means. But all of that's imagined into resistance. <clears throat> and in, even in that imagining, what's here? What is it? <clears throat> the imagining doesn't create, even though it pretends to create. <clears throat> Mind seems to have this amazing, spontaneous hypnotic facility where if it gets a notion, if it, if it gets a concept, it it hypnotically simulates what would experience actually feel like if it were like that. And it can do so quite effectively, as we're all, as we're all aware. <clears throat> but all of this simulation is fantasy. <clears throat> it's very much <clears throat> like when you go to a movie and, you know, the Nazis are chasing, chasing Indiana Jones and, you know, there's no Nazis, there's no Indiana Jones. And yet, the minds can enter into this hypnotic trance of feel it maybe as if it was so and then all of a sudden there's emotional reactivity and excitement and all this sort of thing <clears throat> but there's no indiana jones there's no nazis there's no room there's no chairs there's no people <clears throat> what is this so nothing can be so there's no um, reference point, there's no pinpointing, and yet there, there's a life being lived, so to speak. I mean, that can't be. No life, no lived. It may, you can interpret it as being that, and you're free to do so, but it doesn't actually create anything. No, I mean. If you look very closely at the actuality, what does the words a life being lived refer to? Does it not refer to this right here? Yes. So this is a life being lived, this is a room, this is a library, well, we this is chairs, this is a talk. Well, we can't call those things anything. I mean, we can, we can slap a label on it, but that's not what it is. <clears throat> well, I'm stuck on this one. Good. <laughs> because there seems to be... You're only stuck because you're trying to say something. Right. Okay. Well, 
I guess we just want to pass the time. <laughs> you needn't worry about that. <laughs> I guess time, is time will pass itself. Yeah. <clears throat> But in order for this not to just be, well, I don't know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, just look and see. But there do seem to be lies being lived. There do seem to be lies being lived? Where, where, can, you, where can you find lies? <laughs> well, I know. What do you find? No, I know that's a concept. but. Um, so there do seem to be concepts. Yeah. There's, where are the concepts? They're just. When are the concepts? Yeah, they're just imaginary. Well, it's just this. And yeah. qualifying as imaginary, what does that mean? Right. So everything. Hmm. Well, there's nothing to strip. <laughs> so it's an easy job. Is this what you call the radiance? You can call it that. It's not that. <laughs> It's not not that either. Is, is there a presence without radiance? Without no. Presence and radiance are one and the same thing. Radiance is the reason for all this confusion. The Maya? Sure, radiance is, radiance is the reason for Maya. But the reason it's confusing is because you think it's supposed to not be confusing. It's pure confusion. There's no order. There's no structure. There's no coherence. The mind, the mind labors to try to, to, to impose some kind of coherence or structure or make sense or something that it can talk about or think about. And it's continually, it's, it's like trying to, trying to pick up water in your fingers. It just slips right through. There's nothing there to hold. <clears throat> seems to want to resolve the radiance down to where there is just this without the radiance. To that like, point, tiny point. There's no such thing, it's just a point, then that's the radiance. Yeah. yeah. So there's that unresolvability. That, so there's always at least some would you call it movement? No. And even unresolvability is unresolvable. So that unresolvability is unresolvability, it cannot be resolved. And yet, unresolvability is a pretty strong way to look at it, if you want to look at it inaccurately. <clears throat> inaccurately? Mm -hmm. But all perspectives are inaccurate. All perspectives are true, but they're all inaccurate. You know, I was wondering if you could say something about realization. Yes. If it's a useful concept at all. Sure, it's a useful concept. Okay. <laughs> it's a concept. <laughs> well, it's a concept. Um, realization is a naturality. Realization is the realization of uh, that this is as it is. Yeah. And in a profound sense, everyone has that realization. And but some people don't realize it? Well, they, they, in, they don't allow themselves to realize it through addiction to, to, to fantasy, through addiction to playing mental games yeah. of, of, of hypnotic interpretation, entering a, a reified trance of, of, of supposition that certain fantasies are actually objectively true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a tough one to give up. No, it I'm, is. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just curious. You, 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 you've worked with an awful lot of people and been teaching for a while. I'm just curious what your experience is of, of people being able to give up those uh, reified concepts. I mean, it you, happens, and you don't. It, it's simpler than that. You don't have to give it up. You just have to see that they are that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And in seeing that they are that, um, you're then free to indulge in them. Yeah. But the, but but it, it's different at that point because you see for a fact that you aren't stuck in it and you never were, 
So the addiction itself is 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 neither here nor there. It's the it, the, the the problem with the problem with delusion is thinking you're stuck in it. Yeah, yeah. When you discover that delusion is inevitable, and there's nothing but delusion. It's just different different perspectives, none of which are absolutely true, and yet all the perspectives are inevitable, then there's just free floating random access to whatever your your karmic druthers are in terms of what sort of a um, orientation you, you find yourself spontaneously settling in. Yeah. <clears throat> it seems it seems for me that I bounce back and forth between at least two different perspectives. Sure. Where you know I, I'll uh, you know I'll be functioning in the conceptual reality, and then I'll take a step back and recognize that you know that. What is observing that is not functioning in the conceptual reality. Right. The, the awareness itself is not, and um, and there's there's kind of a freeing that comes with that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but then I go back and forth between the two. Yeah. As you as you play with this more, you're liable to discover that there's no back and forth, and they're not really two. Uh -huh. They're different. They're actually aspects of the same thing. Yeah. Because even in the clarity and the liberation, that itself is just a perspective. And and there's no less clarity and liberation when you're caught up in orientations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the contrast can make it seem huge, but all contrasts seem huge. Yeah. And and I, I think you'll find if you're very sensitively with your experience, you'll notice rather than just there being just two, two major perspectives or paradigms you jump between. Yeah. You may find there's, you know, countless, infinite, little micro perspectives that are constantly sure. drifting in and out of. <clears throat> but there's no problem. No problem. Yeah, and there can it, there can be no problem because what would it be made of? Right. <laughs> and if it seems like there's a problem, maybe you just need to look a little closer. Yeah. If it seems if it seems like there's a problem, you can look at and notice that even the seeming that there's a problem isn't a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like watching a horror movie and getting the shit scared out of you. It's like, that's not a problem. You went to the horror movie to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in this movie. I'm supposed to be neutral. And it's like, why go to the movie then? <laughs> yeah. It's subtle. You know, in spirituality, typically, you know, people discover, oh, there is this other perspective. There is this clarity. There is this, you know, this this actuality of, of being, being, you know, a, a, a certainty that is transcending the normal human perspective. And, oh, wow, that's great. So that's the goal. You know, and then you try to get there from here or whatever. But it gets subtler than that because, you know, as it proceeds, you, again, you discover that, 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 that dichotomy um, is is, is 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 that itself that it is a dichotomy is not is not actually findable. Yeah. You, you know, I mean the actuality is completely complete absence of orientation. Yeah. And which is not a, neg a negation of orientation. It's that any orientation is in fact not an orientation. So therefore the complete absence of orientation looks like any orientation. Which is essentially what experience has always been. <laughs> you know, we, we're in these, we're always in these various orientations, and it never, none of them are. There's no hierarchy. It's not like this orientation is truer than that. You know, the orientation of some transcendent beyond this is better than the orientation of, you know, being a human, living in a body, living in space and time, subject to cause and effect, and so on and so forth. Because they're all exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not necessarily better to recognize that truth, but it seems to be better. It's not better to recognize that truth, but it is possible. Uh -huh. <laughs> so then whether or not it's better is just a game you can play with others for bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then it is possible so that those of us who are inclined to to approach these these things, 
um, have something to play with. Yeah. <laughs> and it sort of seems like there's less suffering if you do recognize that. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, but again, that, that's subtle mm -hmm. because, um, well, let's just say it's subtle. <laughs> I'll leave it at that for now. I'm glad you brought that up. Because that, that seems the case. I think it's very subtle, but the, um, the results of that are that uh, <laughs> Nothing really matters, and um, seeing truly, um, there's just this lightness of being fearlessness. Uh, in spite of all the catastrophes, you know, the, the body, the life, it's like the catastrophes appear to see the day, and that is, is this, uh, it's like it's not for nothing that all these people are aspiring to. Sure, yes, and no, but, it, but it's subtler than that. Yeah. Because um, the spiritual path is a Moebius strip. The spiritual path is a Moebius strip. You end up where you started. Exactly where you started. Um, so at, at certain points on this, on this supposed journey, you may seem to be, you know, completely gone, liberated outside. But you end up coming right back in to where you started, and discover that's the same thing. And then you're truly free, you're free of needing to be free. Yeah. And that is... Well, it's very cool. Yeah. But the coolness is what is intrinsically what this is and has always been. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how we got in this mess in the first place. It's because of how cool it is. And we extricate ourselves from it, and now that's cool. And then we find ourselves back in it, and wow, that's cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like it's so subtle that it's nothing at all, but in that. I was thinking that um, it almost like we a little exercise. We just have to stop, just check this out. It's like it's um, self evident knowing. Of yeah. Just that's it. I can go beyond that. Yeah, self evident knowing. Sure, absolutely. That's a good way to put it. And it's like everything gets juicy. Yeah, well, it is juicy. <laughs> In practice, the only thing that's of interest is, of course, where you are. And if you seem to be any place, then that's where you are. So it's of so it's of utmost importance and also inevitable <laughs> that what you'll be engaged with is where you seem to be, what you you know, what you seem to be, what seems to be going on in, you know, globally um, as your reality. So in that sense, the uh, self-evident knowing that he's described is a spontaneous knowing in this moment. Of course, always. Without any of the interpretive framework that we would typically bring to it, or if it's there, knowing even that. Yeah. To be self-evident. Yeah, there's no with or without, it just yeah. is. So you now you also describe uh, that's, that's always possible to look at this in just that manner. Sure. But given the nature of our conditioning, you've also described it on a number of occasions 
the various tricks you might use, such as looking at the wall or any of a number of objects, to allow for that process to dissolve the apparent concretized objective quality. Sure. Such that there is a progressive opening as you do more and more of that and arrive at the same place. Sure. Is it is my understanding of correctly? Sure. But you know, you are you are you're not actually arriving at a place, it's a place where you always are. Yeah, it's a matter of overcoming one's insistence on not looking. Right. So if we come back it, to the and, and when I say not looking doesn't mean you're not looking, yeah. but pretending that you're not looking. Right. Because in fact, looking at what this is, is merely recognizing that it's inevitable and you've never been doing anything but. Right. <laughs> so, so if we come back to the uh, point that was raised about suffering, that emotional struggle in the moment, there may be these two approaches. There may be the approach that has one look at the uh, the eye that suffers uh, to, to much like any other object to take a careful look, a sensitive look at that and allowing it to be discovered that it's not about resolve, there's nothing to be found, or even look at the feeling absent of any story around. Sure. And and again discover that that's not resolvable. So I think what I'm hearing um, you say is or, that I always have that opportunity. Or or there's, there's a third there's a third option. Which is the fact that whatever is being experienced, an infinity of otherness is also being experienced. That is not that. Um, so that's that's always available too. And, and that's that's equivalent of looking at the wall. And that seems to be self-evident knowing. Right? Well, the self-evident knowing is is all is all three. Any of those, any of those, yeah. those are just different yeah. games to play in, in, that that allow one to 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 recognize that. Right. Right. Now, is the infinity of knowing that it's not being experienced? Well, it's just being experienced. It's just particularly not being censored, <coughs> just being denied. Oh, <coughs> denied by the mind? Well, whatever you can't say, that there's no entity that does it. It just seems to, to be being done. Okay. I mean, you can say by the mind conventionally. But of course, you know, when you look closely at exactly what you mean by that, it gets a little, it's a lot yeah. <laughs> fuzzy. But, but I, and are, are you talking about an infinity of experience to the senses? There's no, there's no qualifying. This experience is a continuum, a certain portion of which is, can be qualified as, sens as sensory, with the, you know, the five senses and mind and thought and so on and so forth. But, it, but, it's, but the continuum of experience includes all of that. You know, as a whole, and and inconceivably more and other than that as well, which we don't have any qualifications for at all, because it's beyond the the human describability, the human conceivability, because of its subtlety or its or whatever. But all of this is present. It, it's a matter of what's outside the field of focus. Basically, the conscious mind is a is a focus addict. The conscious mind fixates on what's in focus. So I'm looking at you, we're having this conversation, bang, all of a sudden that's like what's happening. But meanwhile, everything else is also happening explicitly in my experience. Mm -hmm. You know, the light flickering off that wall and, you know, the motion back there and just in the visual field, all these in the colors over here and all of this is all present, even though, bang, I'm focused on you. So this is what is, you know, being, being emphasized. Yeah. But the fact that when when a when when a point of focus appears in experience, what's outside of that focus is all also always present. Mm -hmm. Now it's present in a perhaps fuzzier or diminished way in some sense. But that's just a flavor of present. That's not less present. Yeah. Um, so the fact that that most of experience is explicitly undefinable through fuzziness is is actually the prime fact. And if one looks closely at what's in the focus and seems to be sharp, it turns out to actually be undefinable due to fuzziness as well. <laughs> so 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 the, the in a certain sense the the periphery reveals the naked condition more clearly than than what is being intended to in focus. Mm -hmm. it, it, it seems like most meditation practices work with focus and attention mm -hmm. 
and that might be helpful in recognizing what you're talking about. If it's not artful, they behave, but most meditation practices are really silly because they're games one's playing, that one's pretending to play, through, as you say, through exercises of focus and attention. Yeah. Whereas meditation is, becomes valuable when one looks at focus and attention itself and discovers the context within which that's occurring. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, 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 the best meditation is to discover that one is continually meditating. Yeah. And it's simply a matter of turning into whatever bandwidth that one chooses to qualify. You know, you want to be a nothingness and no event and transcendental clarity, cool, here you are. You know, you want to be a turbulent mind, cool, here you are. You want to be a, you know, I mean, just all, all of these, all of these sort of bandwidths of flavorfulness are always present simultaneously. It's more a matter of changing the channel than it is of stopping or starting this and starting or stopping now. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, personally, I'm just looking for the channel with the permanent bliss thing. <laughs> Who is it? But fortunately, all the channels are that. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is misidentifying what bliss consists of. We have paltry ideas of, of bliss that, we, that are dualized. We think that there's some bliss as contrasted to some non-bliss. When you discover that the non-bliss is bliss too, then you're home free. <laughs> For real, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> it's not just it's not just surface yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, yeah. That makes complete sense. <laughs> it occurs that the flow of experience is a very broad band of frequencies of all frequencies, and that we as tuners <laughs> choose here and there, and yet. What's flowing in covers everything, covers all frequencies, not monochromatic. The brain was every reality is illuminated instantaneously, but it's slow. After it realized in the in the in, in the form in this interaction, there, you know, everything is illuminated. But the flow itself is pure, pure total resonance with the total spectrum of everything. Sure. Fullness. The notion of more or less is is um, dependent upon qualifications which don't actually exist, can't be found. Yeah. The only thing that can be found is the experiential field, which is always a totality and is always full. And the qualities that appear and disappear within that have absolutely no stability, so that you never actually have them anyway because they're always fleetingly gone. So you know, we play games of more more of this or more of that. But the, 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 the this that we're, any particular this we're looking at isn't a stable this you can actually have more of. The only, the only actual thing present, which is, you know, you call it the field of experience, is always complete, is always full. Yeah. It's never diminished, it's never, it's never, well, it's never less or never more. So the, the notion of enough or not enough is just an irrelevant category. 
So it's boiled down to there's only this, but then the suffering comes up when you know it's like, yeah, I wish it was a little different than this. So yeah, suffering is a game that you play with with alternate universes, with alternate imaginary universes. You know, this there's only this. But I really wish what was happening now was X, Y, Z. It's like, oh, great. Okay, cool. So you wish that. Then you have that. You have the wish. But when you think that, no, that's supposed to be now, and now it's not supposed to be this, what does that mean? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game. It's a mental pretense. Mm -hmm. The first suffering described as arguing with what is. Sure. But um, more fundamentally, it's based on the notion that there's a basis for arguing what is. Thank you, um, yes, um, and the basis the basis for for arguing is supposing that things are a certain way. If things were a certain way, then you could wish they were some other way. But things aren't actually even a certain way because the way things are is absolutely indefinable mm -hmm. and absolutely uh, instantaneous and unstable. So it's, you know, it's already gone. Exactly what's happening right now, it's already gone. It's already gone, already gone, always already gone. So, so what's happening? As soon as you say what's happening in any sense, you're creating, you're oversimplifying, you're creating a caricature, an inaccurate caricature, a fantasy that you're, that you're supposing is what's happening in, in contradistinction to what's actually happening, which is not that. Um, so if you think you can know what's happening, then you can, then you have a basis for wishing it was different. But the, but the problem, the, 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 the initial, what enables that whole argument is thinking that you can know what's happening. When you see you can't know what's happening, all of that mechanism is deflated. It's, re, it's, rendered, it's, re, it's rendered irrelevant. You can't know, you can't say what's happening now. It's too unstable, it's too infinite, um, it's too inconceivable, it's too everything. If you look at the way what is, is the way it is, it's very obvious that you, there's no way to comprehensively get a handle on what that is. I mean, you can, you can, you can, you can analyze out, you know, as many arbitrary, you know, um, uh, aspects or, or, or parameters of it as you choose to, but all of those portions, if you add all of those portions up that you can possibly abstract out, they don't add up to what's actually happening. But what's happening transcends conceivability. It transcends analysis. It transcends describability. It's entirely and absolutely unresolvable. And when, when you see the, 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 the explicit self-verifying fact of this, then that undermines all of this confusion, which is based upon the fantasy that you can know what's happening. And as soon as you can know what's happening, then all of a sudden you can describe things. All of a sudden you can have an, a self-image. All of a sudden you can suppose you are a certain person living a certain life. All of a sudden you can wish it was different and the entire human game starts running amok. But that entire game is based on the premise that you can know what's happening. And you, you do know what's happening, not as a what, not as something that's describable, not as anything whatsoever that can be structuralized. What's, what's here, the way it's here is entirely too slippery. It's infinitely slippery. It doesn't lend itself to any kind of any kind of stabilization or structuraliz structure structuralization at all, and all of our all of our troubles, all of our delusion, is arises from the fantasy that it can be, it can be structuralized. I can say what's happening. I can say what I am. I can say what things are, and that's a lie. It's a blatant lie. It's just not true. And your direct experience, well, very clearly and self-verifyingly. Reveal that that's not true. The end of seeking. Sorry? The end of seeking. Sure. 
not not by stopping seeking, but by rendering it seeking irrelevant by showing it to be a silly game that we play. And as a silly game, it's great, have fun. You know, but, but realize it's a game and then you won't be entrapped by it. You are talking about, uh, reminded me of our conversation last night, but I didn't have my notebook. So I'll ask it again for, um, for these folks. Uh, when I was talking about, um, <coughs> And I loved your comment, your answer about the kids, the Mexican kids who are being traumatized or what's happening in um, the Palestinians are getting no aid. Right. Could you just speak to that? Well, put that in the form of a question. Okay. So, <laughs> well, okay. I mean, the, this whole thing about that we can't say what's really happening. Uh, right. You know, we can listen to the radio and NPR and find that really distressing. That the what you're being distressed by in that case is the narrative. It's a story. It's not the fact. The only fact that you have available is your experience. And what experience do you have of Mexican children being stripped away from their parents? What experience do you have of assholes in the White House? <laughs> what experience do you have of any of it other than these headlines? So what you're being upset about is headlines. You're not being upset about children or assholes or whatever. So and, and headlines, you know, headlines for you is just semantic information. It's fantasies. It's imputations. It's not facts. It's the fact of the concept, the fact of the presence of the idea, the fact of the words on the internet or whatever, or in your case, probably the newspaper. That's in that's, my case. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just funny. I do have a lot. Wow. Yeah. Oh no. Nineteen eighty four. I'm beginning to wonder if any of this stuff is going on. The leader just sitting there in his uh, chair and going, We got these wars going on and we see it all on the internet, but it's I don't see I'm not experiencing that. Okay. It wouldn't surprise me. Well, it is that way, isn't it? What is what way? Well, life is, um, we're always looking for things that we think are outside of our experience that we've got to fix or we've got to solve or this or that. But really, we have, there is only this right here. Yes. Only your experience exists, yeah. and you are the sole inhabitant of it. There is no objective world, there are no objective conditions, there are no others. There is simply the simple fact of that. Yeah. And that's just, that's just a reality check. I mean, look and see. That's not philosophy or spirituality, that's just you know, take inventory. What do you find? You find your experiential field with all sorts of weird experiential characteristics appearing in it, shapes and colors and sounds and whatever. That's the whole shooting match. <clears throat> Seems the best thing that we could possibly do for the problem in the world. And yet, that's all anyone is doing, and, and how much good does that do for the problems of the world? <laughs> <laughs> We're expert at ignoring the obvious. And usually to be a selective paying attention to what's going on. According to preferences and desires, etc. Of course, that's all out there. Yep, the flow of experience is continuing. <coughs> get, get lost in the effects of things. <coughs> Um, just, just noticing what is fantasy. 
Yeah. Just noticing that, and you know, even to the you know the most intimate point of noticing my um, my uh, self image is a fantasy. Sure. Just noticing that, and then um, and then just sensing the the habit of that. Sure. It's a habit. Good. Yeah. And uh, I found it very liberating because it was very obvious. Sure. And 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 also that that habit occurs in the context of not that habit. Mm. So even when you're having these concepts and having these fantasies, all of that's occurring in a context that is not those concepts and it's not those fantasies. It is always fully present, just as much as what you're calling the fantasies and the concepts are. Right. So it's not, even when that event's occurring, it's not actually the event, it's just an event in inconceivable, more another. Right. And that, that event itself is a little fantasy. Yeah. Little and that, that event is an event, is a little fantasy. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's just all these little fantasies. Yeah. Well, over and over again, we take the, the apparent two sides of any question and letting them dissolve into no question at all. Well, there are no questions, there are no sides, so it's easy yeah. to do. But to the extent you're interested, um, I strongly urge you to come to see all this for yourself. I mean, really see it very, very clearly for yourself. And if you have a, seem to have a difficulty seeing it or recognizing it because something other than that seems to be the case, I strongly recommend you look at that closely and or bring it up and we can talk about it. In other words, anything that seems to be anything in particular um, is deserves scrutiny if you're interested in all of this. I didn't hear that. Anything that seems to be any particular way deserves scrutiny if you're interested in pursuing all of this. Well, you know, I've thought about that a lot because you say this repeatedly and uh, certain things just have this overlay. Um, I mean, I understand it intellectually. I, I, it's getting more clear, this whole notion of um, my experiential field being just shapes and colors right. and textures, because I've, I've experienced that, but it's not my regular experience. But, but even the overlay is that. The overlay is not an actual overlay. The concepts are not actual concepts. What are concepts? So what I I mean, it's more shapes and textures and colors or whatever. So what I just heard you say was everything is occurring in this, whether I call it this, that, or the other thing. It's all... It's not just occurring in this, it is this. It is this. this is the occurrence. And you, can, and, and you can pretend to call it to spin it as being all sorts of subsystems, but there are no subsystems. Mm -hmm. The subsystems aren't being negated, but they aren't subsystems, they're this. See, wow. the, see, this, the nature of what this is, is part of the reason why it's so challenging, is its very nature, is that it's infinitely differentiated within itself in terms of its presentation, but it never departs from itself. So, Anywhere you look within the experiential field, you'll find different, qual different explicit qualities than anywhere else you look in the experiential field, no matter how finely or closely you look. I mean, this inconceivable um, degree of apparent differentiation. You know, and the, the, if you look in your, just in your visual field, the, the, there's no two places which have the same information. 
And if you do, and if you make it, do your 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 search very very fine, looking at tiny tiny little little points of light in your visual field, it'll still be true, no matter how closely you look. And anywhere you look within the experiential field, you find uniqueness and you find difference from anywhere else you would look in the experiential field. And yet, it is all just one thing. It never becomes anything other than this that is here, even though it appears to be infinitely different, which is an irrational actuality. It makes absolutely no sense that mind can't possibly wrap itself around that fact. So, you know, again, this is a, this is a, one of the prime bases of con the confusion of people trying to get a handle on this. You know, it's, 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 it's infinitely many and it is one, and those are two ways of saying the same thing. Total gibberish, complete nonsense, irrational, and yet fact, true. And anything other than that is untrue, and that's total gibberish. We shouldn't be entrapped trying to ask you questions or figure things out. Well, you weren't entrapped. <laughs> I'm just... In the asking questions, there's no entrapment whatsoever. <laughs> it's just an inconceivable... Yeah. What? Could you say the same thing about time existing in the timeless, or apparently existing in the timeless? Well, yeah, but there is no time. Time is time is based on the fantasy of memory, or let's say the mystery of memory. It's always right now, exactly right now. Now, you want to look at, you want to have fun with time. Notice the fact that the present moment has zero duration. That's very very trippy. I mean, it's not like really short, and it's not even shorter than that. It's zero duration. So these conditions are here exactly never. No, but, but check it out for you. I mean, really look very, very closely and check this out. I mean, if that doesn't hit you off, you're, you know. <laughs> Is it true to say that nothing ever happened? Absolutely. And it's true to say that happens never happened, <laughs> which is, I guess, another, uh, 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 playing games with the same notion. <laughs> and yet, it's all happening. So, so happening isn't negated. Happening is just nothing ever happened, and nothing ever happened is all this. Yeah. You know, it doesn't fall down to one side or the other of any dichotomy. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what they mean by non-duality. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I hate that phrase. I hate I have to abhor that phrase, but but I brought it up, so I guess I'm stuck with it. It's in the record. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like too. Like I know you're joking around to say you hate that phrase, but that's no, I'm not joking around. around. I really do hate that phrase. Know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're saying it's kind of a smart thing to use that term, but there's there's nothing but this point of view. Yes. And, and it's not a point of view. It's 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 a, it's the totality of reality. But yeah, yeah we can call it a point of that's view. That's actually what I meant. Yeah. Is there in, anything anything received that's being said that I'm seeing anything? And there's no leaving that. There is no leaving that. Right. And in a way, I'm going back a little bit. I don't know what conversation you guys had with last night, but you know, talking about Mexican children, it's almost like. It's it's more like poetry than anything else. Sure. So if a certain poem happens to crack my heart open, it's not particularly. It's not that it's meaningful or that I need to carry a like a sign around like here's the meaning. It's not that. It's yeah. just. It, it is, in a way, it just seems like all there is to do is just to celebrate what your what that experience is. Yes. But but meaningfulness is not negated. No, no. I mean, what we can call karma is the fact that your your nature has a tendency to settle into the ways it sits with it, and having these various seeming patterns show up that seem to embody the, the poetry of what you karmically are finding meaningful, 
and dancing with that and enacting that and being with the lusciousness of that is your meaningfulness and is the very nature of this. Mm -hmm. And, and there's yeah, no dichotomy between all of that seeming elaboration and this naked transcendental yeah, it fact like actuality that arises when I'm <laughs> separating something, I'm imagining something separate from mm -hmm. this. Right. Sure. And I mean, part of the celebration would be this, you know, in, would it include the people that apparently are taking children away from, you know? Sure. It's I mean, all the entire inclusive. the entire story that you orient towards and you find meaningful in various ways, positively or negatively or what have you, mm -hmm. is the your current dance of, with your energy that is your nature, that is your meaningfulness, that is your process, to the extent there is any of that, which there isn't, but we'll let it go for now. <laughs> <laughs> it very much feels like the God, the God view. It is the God view. Yeah. I mean, your view is the God view because you are the God. And the fact, the curious fact that it happens to look, seem to look the way it does, is like, who says it shouldn't? Who's, who's, who's to say what infinite divinity is supposed to look like? Mm -hmm. If it happens to look like your experience and you're getting pissed off about political issues, mm -hmm. it's like, who's to say it's not supposed to look like that? Yeah. It's supposed to look like plain vanilla light and, you know, it's like, says who? Right. I mean, fucking prove it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it doesn't look like that. No. I mean, except when it. Yes. Yeah. Does. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like anything, and yet it can be seen as anything. It's the ultimate Rorschach one. Yeah. It doesn't actually look like anything, and yet it, it's a, it's it's, it's the ultimate anything. it's the ultimate basis for free association. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one of the hardest things about all this stuff is it's pretty much it's all done in relationship to something that doesn't exist. It's all for that. It's like I'm going to get this, I'm going to understand it, I'm going to see it. And there is you know, there's nothing to do that. And yet the radiance substantiates all that. It's like here, we, you know, I look at you, you're talking, I'm paying attention. It's like, oh, I'm going to figure this out. But what? the actual experience is there's nothing. No, here. it's simpler than that. You are getting it. You are figuring it out. You are knowing it. And this that you're that you're describing as not knowing it, going to get it, is that knowing, that getting. Mm -hmm. The getting is the eternal unresolvability. That you never get anywhere is the final what you get to. So when you get to, you, when you're not getting anywhere, you're getting that that is what you what you what you have. This eternal this eternal irresolution is the resolution. This eternal answerlessness is the answer. This unfinding is the finding. Like pulling the bottom out. Well, there is no bottom to pull up. It's easier than that. I mean, this is it. So, you know, it's like, yeah, but, you know, this is it and all I, I didn't even get a lousy t-shirt, you know, I just came to this fucking talk and what the fuck are these people talking about? Yeah, right. That is the bottom line. It's just like, what? Huh? Has there ever been anything else? <laughs> That's a load off. I know, right? You can show up and play cards as if they're wearing cards. I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm only doing this talk because I was requested to. We didn't know about this, or I didn't. You didn't know there was nothing to get. <laughs> oh, I thought there was something to get here. Yeah, the eternal. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the time of the meeting over in the next room there was <laughs> the, the getting something meeting. <laughs> the eternal not finding is the finding. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. When you look for it and you don't find it, you found it. 
It is that which cannot be found, and yet cannot be lost because you are it. And yet it never finds itself, it continually looks for itself, and in not finding itself, it's found itself, because it's that which can't be found. You, you have no idea what's going on, and that is knowing what's going on. I mean, for real. Not, that's not just word games. I mean, it's fun word games, but it's not just word games. <laughs> really, it's a, a free fall. It's not any possibility of a free fall. bigger branch to grab. <laughs> yes, free fall. Always has been, always will be, and you've always known it. <laughs> it's just that the, the struggle is always trying to, but it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be able to have a handle on things. Like, yeah, right, has that ever happened? <laughs> like in music, the next note doesn't happen until it happens. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then. Woody Guthrie with uh, Alice's Restaurant, waiting for it to come around <clears throat> on the guitar. <clears throat> You know, you said this from time immemorial, <clears throat> and and there just seems to be more of a You're getting better at there isn't it there's nothing to get better at. <laughs> well being is looking. Being is a continual looking, the continual engagement, this continual experiencing. But if you are it, then why are you scrutinizing? I don't know. You're scrutinizing it. It's scrutinizing itself. I mean, what sees this? No answer. What is seen? No answer. There's all of this apparent seeing, but what is it? No answer. So bang, you just have this. You know, even thinking of it as looking and looking at something, looking at something, something that's looking at something that's being looked at is 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 just you know, logical argument. So it's like you look and scrutinize and see it's, it's unfindable. And that's, yeah. that's your answer right there. It's not the answer, it's the obvious fact. Mm -hmm. There's no answer, but there's no question. Mm -hmm. It's unresolvable, so how can there possibly be an answer? I mean, it's not unresolvable. That's not some abstract philosophical principle. It's literally unresolvable, which means, what is it? You know, resounding silence follows. What is it? Well, so see that there's no need to work with Right. <laughs> or unless you unless you're in the mood to produce many, which case how about it? Everybody pass the time if you <laughs> if you're perverse. <laughs> Program from a young age be problem solvers. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, but as, as we were talking about earlier, that's predicated on the notion that there are problems to solve, which is predicated on the notion that it's possible to tell what's going on, which on upon scrutiny is, is obviously not the case. So again, all of that proves to be, you know, a fool's errand. It's a sniper. There's nothing there. Great problem solver knows that there are no problems to be solved. Just 
corretores. For the nervous system, it's a matter of survival. How do I survive? Primal problem. Well, that problem takes care of itself and always has. How have you survived thus far? And what is survival in the first place? And and second of all, you're doomed to failure. Because sooner or later you're gonna not survive. You know, so all again, all of that, you know, that survival is survival. You know, there's this notion, oh I'm surviving, I'm alive. What what, what you know, think closely, what does alive mean? You know. But it's, you know, again, nothing, nothing stands up to poetry. No interpretation survives scrutiny. They're all revealed to be assertions about something that has no actual evidence to back it up, no actual experiential evidence. The only evidence for anything is experience. The only way you can tell what's going on is experience. You know. Um, and that information means what it claims to mean has to be verified by experience. Um, so, you know, we've been taught all these things from the, you know, the contentious reality perspective. You know, you have to survive problem solving, have to, you know, build better bridges, have more atomic bombs, you know, so on and so forth, make the rich people richer, all these things that are out there, you know, and none of them stand up to scrutiny. They all turn out to be just empty assertions. They all turn out to be, you know, debating ta debating tactics that have no actual basis in experience. Because the only thing that ends up having basis in experience is experience itself. So I'm always questioning, what is this? What is yeah. this experience? Yeah. And the answer is, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> so if the only thing that's verifiable is experience itself, how do we know we don't survive? How do we know uh, that? Well, you don't. That's the point. Yeah. So so the thing that strikes me is this notion of death, birth, which seem like interpretations. Of course they're interpretations. And, and, and it looks to me as if if in fact, in an absolute sense, this is a spontaneous arising in this moment, which is sense right now of me talking to you, then given its timeless spontaneity in this moment, how could that ever end or be different than this? It would always be this, right? So where does death exist in this? Yeah. Or birth? If this is what, what, it, what it is, then death is this, birth is this, life is this. So, so we, we could actually say we are as dead now as we'll ever be. <laughs> I mean, how do you know you're not dead? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be... I mean, how do you know you didn't die and yeah. this is what the afterlife looks like? Yeah, yeah right. Or seemingly the very next spontaneous horizon. Yeah. Of course, there is the next one, there's no time to have it exist. Yeah. It's only now. So it's, it's funny when we talk about when I die, or this will end at some point in the not too distant future. So we don't have, I have no experience of death. Of course not. But anything you can talk about is is, is like, likewise is a fantasy, is an assertion that has no basis in experience. Growing on an operated since 1976. Um, why don't we take a five minute break to get up and stretch, whatever, you can use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Just staring at your neck. It's a really nice 
Yeah, it was really amazing. I mean, it was really quick, and I was like, let's go. I was like, how do I do that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, it's just kind of like it's kind of the default mode. Then have a few years, and then yeah. Oh my god, it's kind of like you like, so, because the whole idea is that we are trained for this little bit of a to always work for this. Right, but I don't have to get on the steel and I can just take um, yeah, it on. Yeah, it's much better. It, it just goes to see how long that time. Well, I have those ways. What it takes me to dust on is it takes me over to the wild world. It takes me over. It doesn't take me to the wild world. It takes me over to Rosalind. Just go, go down Roosevelt. It well, just began to you go across that little just just catch mind like bridge there. Tight left. This way to move to the other way. So we're on the other way. 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 We're on the other that little bridge of Mont Lake or something. You take a left and we'll follow that down to Lake Washington Boulevard. Right. Oh, they just stay on it. Yeah. Stay on Lake Washington okay, Boulevard. So yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe, maybe you can help me. I'll show you where you're going. I'll show you where you're going. That's the way 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 you're going. That's
Yeah, you know what I could probably do is if you go and put the address in People have very creative ideas about what five minutes means.
Who am I missing? Is most everyone here? No. Well, why don't we resume? So um, I remember when I was uh, in grade school and learning math, you know, we'd have all these this books with all these problems in it, and I did, you know, working on the problem. And the, the, the teacher had this book with all the answers in it. I was like, oh my God, that's great. And then at a certain point in high school or college, sooner or later, I got a math textbook and it had the answers in the back. And I said, what's the point of giving me the book if the answers are in the back? And that's when I figured out that, oh, this is not about having the answers. This is about knowing how to do the problems. Mm -hmm. Now, this is very relevant for the aspiring yogi, such as ourselves. It's not enough, it's not enough for me to sit here and speak from the perspective of the answers at the end of the book. Ideally, you, it'd be, it behooves you to be able to do the, do the math yourself to get to the answers yourself. Um, it's very well to know what the answers are, to know where you're going, but if you methodically can, can, can assimilate everything and, and to arrive at that answer accurately, that's, when, that's the goal of the yogic path. So, the important thing in, 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 the, in, the, in the book is not the answers at the end of the book, but where you are in the book. So the real question is, so where are you in the end of the book, and what problems are you, are you up against? As I put it earlier, anything that seems to be any certain way is an indication of what you're up against. Anything that seems to be any particular way, especially a particular way that seems to be defined or, or locked in or concrete in the case. Because in actuality, nothing like that exists. So anything that seems to be like that is a sign of a problem in the book that you're struggling with. Or let's say that you haven't mastered yet. And that seems to arise with severe emotional entanglement more than anywhere else. Um, possibly. No, not necessarily. No. For me, anyway, it seems that uh, the vast majority of rather passive events or activities are relatively easy to see. There's nothing in the way of historical mm -hmm. But when there's emotional charge, right. when it looks like a pretty difficult thing to get past, the conditioned mind steps right in and it weaves its story and the, the gravity of that that conditioning seems to be such that it's very difficult sometimes to to move beyond it, so <laughs> looking at it from the perspective you're talking about, yeah. looking at any part of it from that perspective, mm -hmm. does seem to do something. I'm not sure what it does because the one thing that seems very clear is that if I go after anything with the intention of getting rid of it, it only enlarges it. Only All right. Supports. Yeah. But but it's 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 fascinating, I think, to apply this to those more challenging times. Yeah. Believe in. Yeah. You know, and, and as I believe we spoke uh, earlier on this topic, um, the, the way that works is you develop some facility with understanding, you know, with feeling what is here, with what you are, what's happening. Um, as that becomes clearer, then yeah. the times where the times where, where identification and reactivity becomes very strong and you feel caught up in it, it's the it's the lesser degrees of that that you'll you'll have more and more ease of chipping away with and seeing through the rest of it. So what, what would have been insurmountable for you five years ago now is a piece of cake. 
what was insurmountable for you now, five years hence, will be a piece of cake, just in terms of developing facility with recognizing this condition. And um, uh, uh, it is cumulative. So as you recognize this condition, you'll, you'll develop greater sensitivity to recognize what it is and be able to do so more readily in uh, seeming circumstances that are, you know, where you have difficulty doing so. The fascinating thing is that it seems that one step in a worm is open, that there's actually more worms than they thought there were. So you end up with maybe an explosion of uh, uh, new, apparent new ways of responding to your condition and pretty successfully repressing for so long. So that, it, as you said before, it may not be easier to make it to be more of a challenge. Yeah. But ultimately, all of that resolves itself because even all of the emotional entanglement is not something one needs to not do or even not get caught up in. One really needs to recognize that it is this. Um, and, and in fact, that recognition is already the case because you already know it is this. I mean, here it is. If, 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 it's, if it's a case of here it is, then here it is. So what else can it be? And that's the most direct approach. Of course. And again, recognition is cumulative. So as you recognize what this is, you will have greater facilities to recognize what this is. I mean, it's basically training and obviousness. <laughs> Which, of course, is difficult for most of us because we're, we're masters of the obtuse, <laughs> the perverse. <laughs> But there's no requirement for the process, right? Of course not. Of course. I think it was cumulative. We got one wonderful week. Well, you don't need to wait. There's nothing to wait for. Um, the, 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 if, if you see that, then you see that. If you don't see that, then what? <laughs> Of course, you're always saying it. And you're always saying it, you're always saying it. Yeah. I mean, in a, in a very profound sense, yoga is a game you play to learn that you don't have to play that game. Mm -hmm. But you've played it successfully when you have successfully and thoroughly learned that you didn't have to. Ultimately, there's no emotional entanglement at all. Right. Or another way to put it is, who gives a shit? <laughs> 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 emotion, shma <shmub> motion. <laughs> uh, I mean, what is emotion anyway? I mean, just bang right there. Just what is this emotion? <laughs> I mean, it's just unending weirdness, but everything and anything is unending weirdness, so, you know, what's the difference? But we're experts at not noticing that, we're experts at pretending, oh, this is something that really matters and it's really important and I really care about it and, God, I hate it so much and I love it and what am I going to do? And all this enormous soap opera that we spend, it's just, you know, so juicy and, we, you know, basically we love it. We're claiming, we're claiming we don't love it, we hate it, but we, but we love to hate it. Well, this is joy. This is this, the, the joy of of experience. Experience is, is is unending bliss. It's unending hedonism. It's it's pure pleasure. All of this incredible richness, just being being you know uninhibitedly indulged in. <clears throat> so when you say that, okay. So you were saying. Um, 
something about being caught up. And so as a result of whatever this is, there's just been a lot of just seeing through whatever words you want to put on it. Just um, just a lot so-called dropping off. And so increasingly, nothing really seems to matter. Um, and there, and even the um, emotional entanglements just, you know. What does seem to linger, and I'm, I've spoken about this before, is this uh, notion of um, what is being expected to be seen in this experiencing. I mean. <coughs> And I think that's just... What exactly do you mean by that? Um, what is expected to be seen when? Or, or in what, in what well, context? Just in experiencing... I, this is just where I seem to be caught up in, is just this... Um, so there's peace, there's contentment. Uh, I'm not noticing uh, joy, I'm not noticing uh, lusciousness. It's just ease. And so, and even just I notice that when I come to the talks, that's when the mind just gets activated and is kind of trying to understand and figure things out. And outside of this, that's really not even happening. I won't stop coming probably, but so that's kind of what it what it what's going on. I don't know if I'll So what do you expect you said something about expecting it to look like? What are you referring to? Um, it just seems in the context of what you just said. Anybody, am I making sense to anybody? Um, so there's not a sense of uh, it's not that there's not words like lusciousness and bliss and joy there that's not being experienced in my experiential field it's just whatever and so but God is saying well is there something that oh hey I understand now the, the, the lusciousness and joy and bliss is just another ways of describing what you're describing is whatever really of course it's a, it's a more subtle parsing of the same actuality. Which is more subtle? Probably a joy or bliss. Or, I mean, arguably, it's more subtle. For example, you can say, whatever, but then you have the amazing, the amazing presence of color and the richness of that, the presence of sound, you know, the textures of, of semantic, you know, experience. And it's like, it's like the, it's like the richest smorgasbord word in, 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 in conceivable. You know, all these experiential qualities present with absolute nakedness and complete power. Well, what's coming to me? So you can call that whatever, yeah. or you can call it wow. Yeah. And, and it's just a different way of spinning exactly the same thing. So it's it's so it's unimportant. Well, the sense that I get is I'm feeling what you're saying now. It's just, um, and you've said this. Being with it with more sensitivity, perhaps. Sure. I mean, a certain amount of whatever or dullness can be a well, sense. It's not dull anymore, thank goodness. You know, mm -hmm. that's gone by the way. Yeah. But so that's an improvement. <laughs> but, uh, but I, yeah, I. But your other words are coming back to me is perhaps just being with this with more sensitivity. And I don't want to make that another striving, but so, I don't know, somehow. Play with it. Play with it. Play with it. I mean, sensitivity is, is interesting because there's no end to it. There's always more. It's bottomless. And it's, and it's fun from a hedonistic point of view because it opens up, you know, ever new dimensions of, of pleasure. And that's when I start thinking about these little possible little tabs of some kind of a psychedelic. 
You don't need the psychedelic, you have this. <laughs> <laughs> if this isn't psychedelic enough for you, you're not paying attention. <laughs> that's probably, you know, I think that's probably it. <laughs> and again, that's, you know, playing with, the, playing with sensitivity. Yeah, I, I think it comes back. And, 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 there's, and there's no, you know, it, there's no need because it doesn't matter. If you're with it more sensitively or less sensitively, it's still the same thing. It's just different perspectives on the same thing, so you're not actually gaining or losing anything. It's just a matter of dancing with it in a different way. Well, it's changeless, and it's also nothing but change, depending upon you know how you, which side you're looking at it from, so to speak. Not that there are actually sides, but you know, we'll be, we'll be generous. <laughs> it's it's change in the way it appears to play out in the dream. Yeah, Whereas sure. changeless in its absolute. Yeah, it never it never departs from itself. It never gains or loses anything. It is, it is entire. It is entirety in itself. It is complete in itself. It is finished in itself. Intrinsically, absolutely. And yet, there is this endless play of display, this endless play of phenomena that it presents as, which is nothing but change, nothing but irresolvability, and nothing but entertainment, nothing but joy, and 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 a profound enactment of meaningfulness on just infinite dimensions. But always grounded in the yeah, always never, never becoming anything, never going anywhere, never gaining anything, never losing anything. It's it's absolutely inviolable, invulnerable. It's a state of absolute transcendental purity that that cannot be improved and cannot be sullied. And this it is inalienably, even as it is presenting us all of this amazing. Light show. Immense experience yeah. yeah, of course. It's always there's nothing but that's what that's what we are. We hope we call it that, but it is this unspeakable transcendental actuality that is here. <clears throat> The, the point of perception seems paradoxical to me. Um, in in exploring the nature of awareness, I get that there is no, or there doesn't seem to be localized awareness. Awareness seems to be everywhere, but the the sensory inputs and the 
and those points of perception seem to be localized and it and it feels like a stumbling block to me like i can't get it past that well localization can appear in that which is not local seeming let's say seeming localization right seeming <coughs> right exactly sure. yeah so why is that a stumbling block just like it can happen it can seem to be like that without necessarily actually being like that in a dream we experience this in a dream there's nothing there at all there's no body there's nothing and yet a body can seem to appear it can seem to present as if it's having a, a localized perspective on a seemingly external complex environment perhaps or not and yet there's none of that is actually there and none of that is actually like that and yet it can seem to be like that so this obviously has enormous flexibility with the ways in which it can present itself without necessarily actually becoming the implications of the way it's presenting itself or being limited by those implications. It, yeah, that's what I meant by paradoxical. It seems, it seems that way, and I sense that it's not necessarily that way, but uh, there's yeah. some, but I feel stuck there. But what, what, where's the stuck? I don't know if the stuckness. I hear that it seems that way and it's not necessarily that way, but where's the stuckness? No, I, I'm wondering I mean, for you, why does it, what, what, what do you suppose, why does it feel stuck? And, and, and it, has I, a, it just feels like the next thing to work through. I, I, I was, it took, it took a while exploring the nature of awareness to get that awareness is not happening locally sure. it doesn't seem to be happening locally and it's like once that once that pathway was established mm -hmm. i mean it was it was there right that's the sure. way it is so sure. you dumb shit, why it takes so long to figure that right. out <laughs> but then but then i start exploring senses and it feels like they're those points of perception are associated with a body yeah and i just I, I don't know. I just, it feels like there's something there to work through that I'm not getting. Well, it, it, yeah, I mean, I, I think the bare fact is, is what there is to get, that it can seem that way. Mm -hmm. You know, and that the way it seems is arbitrary, or let's say it, it can be, can be any particular way without necessarily being limited to actually being that way. But it's a learned interpretation. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, the mind is very powerful at at creating a a a, sen a subjective sense of the simulation of information. So when the mind gets indoctrinated that oh, I am in the body, that can become a very felt, reified seeming actual undeniable perspective right. um, but you know as you've discovered when in looking at awareness that there's actually other ways of seeing it that are that are equally intrinsically self-verifying and valid but the mind because of its power of of holding things to be a certain way and making it feel as if they actually are that way i mean it feels as if it's that way um uh the, this has enormous force but the fact that it's the mind doing it doesn't make it so it's not actually so even though it's so powerful it's making it seem as if it's actually so well it's like saying it's like it's like like saying there's an ego well what is ego yeah. right sure it's the same thing it's a word it's the it's same this, thing you're, you're looking for you're looking for the experiential actuality and it gets it gets fuzzy real fast. Right. <laughs> and embodiment is the same thing. You know, what we think of as body appears is aspects of, of, of experience of, of experiential qualities appearing in the experiential field that are not particularly coherent and 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 coexist synchronistically, but not as a unity, not as a whole. And the imagination pieces them together into a whole. Right. right. You know. I mean, the sense of the sense of touch is this, you know, very vague, strange cloud of tinglings, and then in, in, in the field of vision, there's this small, certain small portions of it 
that are, you know, that I can think of as, as often appearing with unarguable similarity that always seems to, that generally always seems to be there, more or less, if I'm not paying close attention to the fact that it disappears every time I blink my eyes, right. and so on and so forth. But all of these phenomena exist and come and go in predominance, um, like, like all the other phenomena that exist and come and go in predominance, come and go um, with an experience concurrently with them, but we don't call that body. So anyway, the, the, the point is that it's, it's all, um, if you look closely at the experiential actuality, it's, it's not as integrated in the ways as, that the mind holds it to be. You mentioned dreams. Uh, are you lucid in your dreams? Do you? Sometimes, not very often. Most people are occasionally, but most of the time, we just buy into whatever is happening, no matter how absurd it is. Only absurd when we wake up and look back on it. What what I am is that when uh, all the time I I know what it, what this is, whether it's dreaming or waking or or deep sleep or whatever, and you do too. But when one recognizes that, you recognize that you do, and that's that's the that's the the paralucidity. It's lucidity without needing to be lucid, because that's the. Because that's lucidity to the true condition. So if you're lost in the dream and not lucid, you're actually not lost anywhere. You're just in this. And this is presenting as if it was that. So the lucidity is not actually a gain, it's just a shift of a shift of erroneous perspective. The only true perspective is this right here. Bang, which is always the okay, case always true, always right here, right now. It can look like anything. And most of the time it looks like confusion and delusion and being caught up in things and being clueless. That's why this dominance mode of presentation. But when it, but even as it's doing that, it is this. We can explore our dreams as play. Sure, you can explore anything as play, you know, and and ultimately, um, you what you are, what this is, is completely invulnerable. So it's nothing but play. There's nothing. There's no. There's nothing risk. There's no vulnerability. Nothing can be lost. Nothing can be damaged. It's all basically just play, entertainment, exploration, enacting in, in enacting in fantasy meaningfulnesses. You made an interesting comment there when you said, even in deep sleep, you know what this is. Sure. And that's very interesting to me because that suggests that it doesn't take the so called awake conscious mind to know what this is. No, of course not. It's not a function of this apparent active mind. Oh, no. Your conscious mind, your conscious mind is not a knower, it's an object. The knower, the knower is being itself. Being itself is knowing. I mean, we have this, these words being, being and knowing, and they're two different words, but that's fantasy. There's only one. Being, what we call being and what we call knowing is one and the same thing. If it is, it is known. To, to, to exist is to be known. In a sense, then, is this deep sleep right now? Certainly. I mean, you know, in a, in a very explicit sense, all conditions are present all the time. But right now you're you're in waking condition, you're in deep sleep, you're dreaming, and various, you know, infinite other dimensional dimensionalities of experience are all occurring at this instant. And it's just a matter of what seems to be most predominant of what you may be acknowledging directing your attention to. <clears throat> in fact I find myself dreaming while awake. Of course, of course. We all do. You know, we usually call it thinking. Beyond <laughs> <laughs> thinking, just all of a sudden, out of imagination, something. No, of course, of course. But daydreaming? Not even daydreaming, just a flash of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Lapsing into a dream, much like a nightmare. Sure. A total fabrication.
So the, the fourth stake, kind of the, what is the not outside of the waking dream? Uh, what do they call it? Turia? Is that the word? Sure. You know, but to me that's way too much classification. You know, there's no there's no first three states, so let so don't worry about the fourth state. <laughs> There's just this appearing in whatever way it, it, it appears. And even as it appears in a way, it's not actually in that way because it's not resolvable that it actually is that. Because again, if you look at what, if you look at what is present in the experience, it does not resolve to actually being in any particular way. Things seem to be a certain way to the extent you don't look at them closely. When you look closely at what is present in experience, it opens up, it reveals itself as being inconceivable, explicitly inconceivable. That is so cool. I mean, the way you stated that cuts to the chase in a way that almost all the other non dual teachings don't do. They dance around it and work their way through the process of coming to understand it. You just said that the three states don't even exist. It's all just turned up from the beginning. I think yeah, yeah. And, and it's not even true yet because that's just another sort of classification. You know, all these, all these spiritual traditions play these games of having all these elaborate classifications. They may or may not arguably have some utility, but they're not true. Well, I mean, no state, state. Yeah, I mean, any, only any state, a state is already what, what, what? <laughs> All these labelings and classifications just, you know, give the mind more games to play that are that are untrue in their implication. And yet all of these games and all these labels are themselves not what they seem to be, they're they're transcendental nothingness. They say this is a state. Okay, cool. So this is a state. So What's that? What does state mean? Look closely at what state means and what do you find? <laughs> state? A state? A state. I think that, that relates <clears throat> to what Nancy was saying about <clears throat> words like lusciousness when he's, you have you have a picture of these words in your head. And and it sets up an expectation right. that has no basis in reality whatsoever. Right. And these word games can just trip you up. They can like, indeed, yeah. And I'm aware of that. I play these word games quite deliberately as a remedial. You know, people think of experience as being just this neutral thing. So I point out its lusciousness, its richness, its hedonistic aspect. Not that that's literally true. But it's a remedial, poetic remedial antidote to the dullness that most people suppose exists as objectivity, as objective presence. And then, um, hopefully, by playing with that, by exploring it, one, 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 you know, enjoys the the actuality. But any way of holding this to be is inaccurate. Any way of labeling this or describing this is inaccurate, because it, it is. Unresolvable, it cannot be um, conceived of, and hence cannot be described. It intrinsically is that. You know, as humans, we seem to have gotten great mileage out of our intellectualizing and abstracting capabilities and being able to describe things and we can build bridges and build atom bombs and all these things and we think it's giving us enormous evolutionary advantage and maybe so. But um, all of that is a departure from what's actually happening in terms of its implication. And all of that, even as it happens, is not that. Atom bombs are not built by conceptualization. Bridges are not built by conceptualization. Even though it looks like a lot of conceptualization may be occurring, 
when bridges are being built. That's not how they get built. The concept never built a bridge. Kind of wonderful when all of the words like meditation, shamani, whatever, lose their meaning because that's what I did. Me up, I think it would be <clears throat> the idea that, like, when maybe I'm daydreaming or worrying or you know, having a problem, seemingly having a problem, but that is different than when I'm present, right. aware, and awake. But this, that's better than that, right? So, what we'll would you say? But you're saying they're all the same, all the same, and even thinking that this is better than that is all the same. So it's not that it's not better, it's that you holding it as being better itself is not worse than you not holding it as being better. So it goes, so it, it, it includes even more. So it wasn't a hang up to deal with the thing, worrying about it, but it's a hang up, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thinking that it's a problem is not a problem. Wanting to change it is not a problem. Because all of that is just a, is just a, a, you know, a, you're calling it that, but all that is is just an energy vortex occurring in this spontaneously in this in this that is. I'm calling an energy vortex obviously is probably a license, but it is whatever it is. And we call it as oh I'm worrying about this and oh I I don't like that I'm worrying about it I shouldn't be and it would be better if I didn't and so but all of that. What's actually occurring when that when what you're calling that occurs, and how is it any different from what's actually occurring when you're when you're calling that isn't occurring? It's essentially just very different presentations of the same thing, and all there is is different presentations of the same thing, and even calling it different presentations isn't true because it's the same presentation, just with a seemingly different aspect. I mean, it's endless weirdness. There's no way you can get to the bottom of how it, it is like that. You know, like, like I said, the, the, the core paradox in all this is that it, it is endlessly differentiated within itself, but it never departs from itself. So it has an infinity of different modes and flavors it can seem to present as, but it never actually is any of that. It's, it is itself. And it, it is that it is itself that is the common denominator that liberates, because you see that all of these different permutations and combinations that can seem to occur are, are nothing, are not anything that you ever actually are in or are arriving at. They're just, you know, flavors of seemings that don't actually hit you or lose you anything. They don't actually change, they're not an actual change of condition. So maybe it's that seeing, because uh, what I experience is in, in that seeing, in that moment, it, there's just like an evaporation. Sure. It's not an evaporation, but you see that what was there is not there. So it seems like it seems like something disappeared, but there was never anything there, and you're saying there was never anything there. So. I mean, everything disappears when you see what this is, but nothing disappears because there never was anything. It just seemed to be. Yes. Not, but nothing goes away either because this is this and here it is. But that this, but that's this was that disappears. There was never any of that. There's only just this. You know, we, we, we imagine the world's consisting of all these that's. All these different different states and different objects and different events and different beings and all that. But there are no that's, there's just this. But the that's, the that's go away, but nothing is negated because the that's never were that. They were always, they were always just this. 
So even as you show up in all of these in all these complexities, the complexities aren't really complexities, and you're not really caught up. So they don't need to go away because it's not really like that. And happily, this is not sounding like a word salad to me in this moment. <laughs> well, first, wow, you're seeing it. We're having an air and free fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it possible while you're so-called caught up to know that you're not really caught up? Of course. Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're always caught up. There's no such thing as not being caught up. You're always caught up to some degree or another. Your delusion is the only possible condition. But delusion is always this. So delusion never leaves this, never sullies this, never damages this, never departs from this. And that is, that is quite clear and obvious. And when that obviousness is, when you recognize that, that that obviousness is obvious, in fact, <laughs> and it's obvious. I mean, we play games with ourselves that, oh, I'm, I'm confused, but this is clarity that I had. If you look closely at the clarity you had, it was confused too. It's always delusion. There's no, there's no end of delusion. But delusion is just the, 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 the interface flavor of actuality. It always seems like something, but it never is anything. It's a constant searching for something. It's like you're always waiting for something other than this. Reality always misses itself. And yet it's always finding itself because what it's finding is that which can't be found, so it looks like I'm missing. So you find yourself holding things more lightly. Sure, because you, because you see that they that they, there's nothing there to hold more heavily. <laughs> <laughs> so the holding it all is, is kind of a, a game you're playing. So if it's a game, then it has the flavor for game rather than the flavor of an urgent life or death necessity. It's a lot more fun because it's uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, you enter into the realm of the sacred mantra. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> the most holy, the most holy mantra. Yes, because you're not holding it as something over there that you get to once you get rid of this damn delusion. Mm -hmm. Delusion is the is the interface of presence. Mm -hmm. Delusion is the evidence of presence. It's the it's the symptom of presence. It's the spore of presence. It's the wake of presence. In fact, it is. In fact, it is. Oh. <laughs> Cut to the chase, I like it direct. <laughs> Here I am wallowing in poetic analogy. <laughs> well, you you said <clears throat> about the overlay and delusion, but what I'm hearing you say is this is where I'm really confused. Delusion is everything. Well, I guess every, if everything is everything, you can say. Delusion is everything. You can say when I say that when I say that there's always delusion, what I'm saying is that this always always wonders what it is, and it always comes up with a solution. Then the solution is never true. Yeah. Or let's say never accurate, never comprehensive. But there's never a case where this doesn't come up with a solution. Because it's hyper, it's pure hyper transcendental intelligence, so of course it comes up with a solution. Yeah, I wouldn't write that down. <laughs> so the, the mind needs illusion in order to codify and identify and perceive uh, 
get when there's that recognition that none of those things have anything to do with what is really there. It just blows the whole scene, I guess. Uh, what is a root and what is root? <coughs> the real cannot be turned into a thing. Is itself, but the nature of what it is is to be continually looking for itself, seemingly. And it always finds itself, but the itself it finds is never the itself it's, it's specifying. Uh -huh. Did you say that it's specifying? Huh? What was the word you just said? That it expects to find. Oh, it expects to find. Reality, reality is infinite. So infinity is looking at itself, saying, what, what am I? What is this? And because it's infinity, and the answer that comes up with is going to be partial. And yet in its naivete, it continues to spin out answers. It's like asking what the final value of pi is, or dividing by zero. You never get the right answer. But there's nothing else to do for it but to keep trying. Because there's nothing else for it to look at but itself. Would all of this, including ourselves, be like templates or something that through which awareness knows that it exists or well not templates, but the symptoms of awareness exploring itself. Your experience is what awareness exploring itself looks like. Your experience is what the divine infinity exploring itself looks like. It could look like anything, and it will look like anything, but it happens to look the way it looks right now in your experience, because why not? Because that's how it happens to be to hate. <clears throat> how is what you're saying uh, any different than just another interpretation? Well, it's not. It is an interpretation. But it's, an, but it's a, hopefully an artful interpretation. It's an evocation to explore the actuality and in exploring the actuality you will miss it and in missing it you will find it because because <laughs> the missing and the finding are, are, are the very essence of it Is it, um, it seems as if it's storing itself or trying to know, to find itself. And then it realizes that it never is going to do that. And then it just relaxes into itself. So it relaxes into itself, but that doesn't stop the constant exploration. Constant exploration. It may, it may, it, holding an exploration may be used, may be hopelessly inaccurate. Maybe it's just continually moving into itself. Yeah, yeah, okay. And what it finds is whatever it finds, which in, a, in the nature of fractals is an infinity, which, which presents as if it was a superficial exam, level of examination, presents as if it was affinity, but upon Deeper investigation, it opens to infinity and in, in, in resolution. And then something falls away that it's no longer, it's not looking, it's not searching for like a, a, a means to an end. It may, be search, it, may be, it may be searching for a means to an end when it's naive, but as it as it learns and gets wiser, then it realizes that's not a relevant matter. Yeah. 
Is that just the dance? The dance that occurs in that in and out sort of discovery. Well, we can say that for anything. You don't know what it is. It's this. Of course. That's, I mean, that's, that's the only thing you can say, is this, this is this. You know, and all the rest, all the, all of this, all the specificity is just, you know, a poetic exploration of, of, of ways of approaching the subtlety of that, not to capture what it is, but to invalidate our erroneous ways of what we're in the habit of thinking that it is. The problem isn't what this is, the problem is our mistaken habits of thinking it is a certain way. Yeah. So that's what all this talk is about. This talk is not about what it is, this talk is, is about that it's not what you think it is. So we talk, we're talking about what we think it is and then we're, we're blowing that out of the water, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> It seems like it would be, in some ways, it would be more accurate uh, uh, a description of what this is. This, this, uh, we all came in here and you said, it's this. And we just picked up instruments and started making music and dancing. But that's all we're doing. We're sitting here talking. How's that different than playing instruments and dancing? It's just, it's just meaningless activity that we're doing with our bodies and minds. I'm yeah. moving my lips and my voice are vibrating. It's not like yeah. it means anything. Yeah, I guess it's just attaching meaning to the words. Yeah, words have no meaning. Yeah. Any more than notes do. Are we looking for more subtlety? Does it look for more subtlety itself? Well, as it matures, it recognizes its own subtlety. You know, I mean, all of this yoga spirituality is about maturing, it's about this learning to be with itself in, in a more subtle way, in a more accurate way. It never achieves total accuracy because there's no such thing. And there's never been anything but total accuracy. It is delightful to find a subtle experience. Yes. Yeah, this is a yes. What this is, as it as it settles into itself more, more intimately, it reveals endless delight, reveals endless richness and fulfillment and satisfaction. Because it begins to recognize that it's getting what it wants, as opposed to the continual failure to get what it wants, that it that occurs more overtly. When it's approaching itself naively, like in terms of the interpretive frameworks of, of you know mainstream human conceptualization and so on. Could you say? Uh, I, I just missed the first half of that sentence about. I have no idea what I said. <laughs> I knew that as soon as I asked. You can, it's in the recording now, so you can listen to it in reruns. <laughs> It's all lies anyway. <laughs> the words aren't important. You're hitting the sense of it. It's all that meant. The only sense, the only thing I'm, I'm trying to talk about is this. And 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 notice you you're, you're free to notice that all of any and all of your ideas about it are and have always been wrong. And so then, as you notice that, you become free from the from the you know potentially difficult implications of those ideas that you've held. That's all. Very simple. Mm -hmm. And all the detail and all the talking about this, that, and the other is just aspects of that. The principle is very simple and essential. Do it for yourself. Anything you think is a certain way, it's the actuality, and you will discover it is not comprehensively defined by the way that you're used to thinking of it. Man, all of a sudden that way of thinking of it is invalidated as being true. So it's not that. It's what it is. And then if you if you're like most people, you then erect a new revised version that's supposedly more comprehensive. But then you know um, 
wash, rinse, repeat. You repeat that. <laughs> you, look at, you look at the new, improved, you know, 2.0, sophisticated, subtle definition, compare it with the reality, and it's not that either. Bang. And, you know, this is peeling the layers of the onion, which goes on indefinitely, and then you're in the game. But you recognize you're in, your, in the game rather than just thinking you're stuck in some pathetic human life. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's all that this talk has been about is that your conceptions and hence your beliefs, because your beliefs are ultimately about your conceptions, are inaccurate. What is here is beyond what you conceive it to be, explicitly and experientially, not just philosophically or in some abstract sense, concretely. Your experience is infinite, unresolvable richness, and your concepts are finite, limit, limited, and resolved. And it's apples and oranges, they have nothing to do with each other. So the other day at the PCC, somebody asked you, <coughs> um, and you said, I mean, sitting here, objects are noticed, but they don't have to be... They aren't objects. Objects are noticed, but they aren't objects. Right. Well, that's what I wanted to say, that, yeah. It's not like nothing is here. It's not like, I mean, that's what I'm wanting to. But here is here. So I see you, but you're not you, you're light. Mm. So I see light, but there's no I, so there's see light. And see and light are synonyms, so there's just light. So then I see you boils down to light. Mm. So uh, there's really a very subtle <laughs> clinging to a concept. Yes. That's that's the, the sole spiritual dilemma. And and the spiritual solution is not to stop clinging to concepts, but to see that that's what's happening. Right, right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You don't need to stop misinterpreting everything to see that you're doing it. And then you know you're a crazy person and you brought him to the human race. <laughs> We're all fucking nuts. I mean, that should be pretty self-evident by now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, but this, whole, this whole tangible thing is, is, what I, is, is what I find so valuable. <laughs> this is called the collection of the of our man. Now there's all these there's all these horrendous right hand path spiritualities that argue, you know, I have to stop thinking, I have to stop conceptualizing, I have to empty my mind, I have to live in some kind of neutral void. You know? <laughs> but, but, but if if that were even possible, which I personally would say, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> if that was even possible, it seems like an awful lot of work. Whereas if you simply notice the fact that concepts are inaccurate and irrelevant, then the fact that the mind is continually spitting them out, who gives a shit? But to see that specifically was is really helpful. Yeah, see it specifically, but it's specifically true, and it's specifically obvious, and specifically self-evident and self-verifying in the case, so it's a piece of cake to see. <laughs> it's easy to say, but it's actually easy to do. Simply, really simply compare, take a Take a concept, take the experience that you hold the concept to refer to, and notice that the concept is like a stick figure, and the, the reality is like an infinite three-dimensional technical or fractal whatever. No way that the stick figure, it's like a two-year-old, you know, has a piece of paper and 
draws a line and like that and like that and a little circle and says, that's mommy. It's like, not really. You know, you look at mommy and you look at the stick figure and it's like, something's not lining up here. And this is how concepts are. Concepts are like stick figures. It's just, I mean, it's just so simple, you know? Look at it. I have the concept of a chair. Now, even if it's a vague concept, it's a limited concept. And then I have, you know, the, the, the concept of chair is pathetic next to the actuality. And it's, it's completely blatantly obvious. Yeah, that is. That's well, but, obvious. but that is the only, that is it. That's the totality of spirituality right there. That's what liberation consists of. That's what realization consists of. It's noticing that this is not what you think it is. And then you're free to, even as the mind is busy thinking, thinking whatever it has been thinking, or whatever it thinks, as it will endlessly do, you're free to notice, oh my God, there's a whole actuality here. This is, here. I've been busy thinking about this X, Y, Z. But mean, and meanwhile, Because conceptualization doesn't inhibit or block in any way direct experience. Direct experience is always fully present. Conceptualization does not impose itself between the experiencing of actuality and actuality. Actuality is present, it's experienced fully, completely, nakedly, immediately. Thought seems to do that. But it pretends to, but it doesn't. Thought occurs in its own dimension, and it itself is own is its own immediate, naked, intimate presence. Mm. Thought isn't really thought. The, the thought the thought that thought is thought is a thought, <laughs> and like all thought, it's an inaccurate claim. It's an assertion which is not true. So how so how does it affect? Well, it's the, I was going to say, how does that affect my vision? But it's not affecting my vision, it's simply... It doesn't affect the vision. It's the perspective, it's the perception of... It's really crazy. You're, what you're exploring is the, the hypnotic power of mind to simulate a concept as if it was true. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you go to a movie, you're seeing a pattern of light on a screen, and the mind says, What would it feel like if this pattern of light represented real human beings that were actually in this situation? And the mind is powerful to enact that, and all of a sudden you're, it feels like it really is that to whatever extent. That's exactly what happens right here. The only thing that's here is patterns of light. And the mind powerfully has stepped in and said, what would it feel like if this was a room full of people sitting in chairs in Seattle, Washington, having a spiritual talk? It would feel like whatever. But it's, just, it's all hypnosis. All that's here is patterns of light. A naked, infinite field full of patterns of light. There's no viewer of the light. There's no anything, it's just this, this present, this radiant presence. Well, so I'm just going to be honest, I don't know where everybody else is at. I know there's everybody else, but <laughs> <laughs> I know this. Of course you know it. But, but, I know this, but, and you say, well, look into your direct experience and you know this but what? Finish the sentence. I know this but. But there's this imagining that there's the Peter Brown and the black right. and blue. Right, there's imagining. And I know that too. So what? Right. So what? So there's imagining, so. That's just stating the, stating the fact. That's just what? Stating the fact. You're saying you, there seems to be this imagining. So I guess there's something in me saying, well, I should be seeing something different, or I should be just seeing light, and I should be seeing people. You are seeing light. 
<laughs> you are seeing Peter. Already. Of course you're seeing light. What else can you possibly see but light? Turn the lights off. See the black and blue. That's light. How do you know it's black? It's light. You call the color black. Come on, somebody. Help me <laughs> Let me help you out. I'm trying to help you. I'm, I'm serving him on a spoon. On a golden spoon. Held by angels. Nobody else. <laughs> Here me, anyhow. <laughs> this, this is Nancy we're talking about. <laughs> okay. Bada boom. Yeah, that's the Okay. <laughs> is it even light? Huh? No, of course not. That's a euphemism. You can't say what it is. It's unresolvable. But we call light this. That we call light. What is it? You know, you look, you look at it and it's. It doesn't resolve to, to find ability, but it doesn't go away either. It's it's ob it's explicitly obvious, self-verifyingly actual, but you can't find what it is. So and that's true of of that is true across the board. It's unresolved. So what's happening in this moment is is a conceptualization of what I'm calling this. That's part of what's happening. What else is happening? Well, imagining. What else is happening? The imagining is happening. What else? Where is the imagining happening? What else is happening where the imagining is happening? Well, the imagining is happening here. And what else is happening here? There is seeing happening here. Yeah. All of this is happening. All of this is happening. And what you're calling conceptualization is merely yeah. a, a, a relatively minor aspect of this that is happening. But happening is huge, encompassing everything. This fucking spin, it's just insane. But I it is insane. But we're, 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 you're a crazy person. You don't need to be sane, just, just stop pretending you're, 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 you know, that you are. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take another five minute break. <laughs> another one of our 15 minute, five minute break. Yeah. So I'll see you all back here in about half an hour. Yeah. 
I know, I know what I'm doing, but I'm just supposed to it's something to deal with there, too. I don't know if it's
But uh, we have been very much very Somebody said um, something about crazy personal use of that. Yeah. Um, we're having a little talk. Somebody mentioned something about crazy person. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody said, you know, we don't want to go there. We don't want to see that. And then I, I, then there was a, a question arose like, I wonder if this is yet another subtle. Uh, Like that, I don't even, you know, I don't even know, but it may, it made me think about that, it made me wonder about that, you know. On the one hand, it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of clinging to self-concept, but I don't know. But it, it was just, I wondered about that if, if that could be just be a, another subtle. Exactly what that are we talking about? Not wanting to think you're a crazy person. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Sure. It's just uh, a first. Something arose. It was questioning that. Sure. Mm. Well, well, our psychology, especially the psychology of self image and self identification, is our greatest enemy in spirituality because we're profoundly oriented to. Trying to pretend we're the kind of we're the person that we wish we could 
be and, and we're trying to pretend we are, even while in the face of the, the shocking and horrifying fact that we are what we are, that we, that we hate and we wish we weren't. But um, settling into reality demands settling into the fact that you are what you are. And, and typically, the persona has an enormous emotional investment in denying that. So this is one of the facets that, that makes um, yoga difficult. Not that yoga is difficult, but that we don't really want to do it because we really want to maintain, uh, you know, we feel a strong urgency to maintain our, our self-deception and uh, especially our deception of others. Even though it fails utterly and, and no actual successful deceptions being perpetrated, because what and who everyone is is blatantly obvious, but we don't like to admit that either. <clears throat> That's the beauty of the failure, isn't it? The failure is not directed to this discovery. Is sorry, is what? The, the failure of that person right. is the driver to this discovery. Yes. Well, the failure is, is the discovery, enables the discovery. And, 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 and it's, the, it's the success, it's the thing, it's the insisting that no, I am who I, I am who, I, who I'm claiming to be. That is, a, that is typically the greatest impediment to recognition of all that. Because this, that this is the way it is, is, no, is, is, is kind of easy and kind of fun. But, the, but the, 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 diffi the difficult, painful implication of it is not that so much as, but but that means I have to come out and everyone's going to find out the emperor has no clothes, which were, you know, it's like, don't go there. wants to hold on to the idea that there's someone that needs to be liberated. Well, sure, but that's just, just a smoke screen for, for holding on to that there's someone at all and that that someone is important and is, and is who, I, who my playmate is. <laughs> I'm a good person. I'm a spiritual aspirant. I'm substituting for reality. It's another, another notch in our claims to status and... <laughs> Yet there's no crazy person and there's no not crazy person. I mean, of course. Okay. Yeah. I was there's just the, that's the fact itself, which is what it is and, and cannot be described in any terms, let alone those terms. <clears throat> You know, but but every yogi comes comes across this fact. That you, that, that, that individual psychology is is a is a, a powerful force. A factor, like psychology, you. yours, who you who your self identification is a is a powerful force that um, becomes confronted in yoga. Yeah. Especially our claims to integrity. Our claims that we are some something, and we are somebody, and we are a certain way, as opposed to the actuality, which is that we're a hodgepodge of totally disconnected energies and impulses that have no integrity or coherence at all. Well, there's certain weirdnesses that can arise, you know, like. There's a recognition of certain weirdnesses. What would you call it? Um, quirks or whatever. Yeah, but, but, there's, but there's, not, there's nothing but. There's nothing but quirks. Okay. okay, well that's yeah, yeah, and 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 and, 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 and having that just be no problem is. <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, well, you you're you're an astrologer, so you understand. There's the play of disparate energies that essentially have nothing to do with each other, just a random juxtaposition. 
and his energies in at themselves. <laughs> that's all the persona is, that's all the personality is. Yeah, I just see it as a vehicle. <laughs> Yeah, that's very crazy. For, you know, for a long time, you know, thinking that you had to drop that, stop that. <clears throat> but is it random? I mean, since you brought up astrology, I would. Well, random, I mean, it's a turn of phrase. What does that mean? Yeah. It is what it is. And I know you, I, or at least I thought I heard you say uh, this. <clears throat> Maybe I misinterpreted that the patterns don't, don't exist. But what I see astrologically is that patterns in people's seeming lives do repeat and repeat. The patterns exist, but that the patterns are actual patterns. They say the pattern that you think it is okay. does not exist. Fair enough. And as you get to the bottom of what any pattern is, you say there is no bottom. Got it. So the pattern is what it is, but what that is is totally open ended. Right. Okay. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're here. We're, uh, this is a paradox. This infinite degree of pattern is self evident. And yet, none of the patterns resolve into being actually coherent or anything. So there's no patterns. And infinite degree of patterns all made of infinity itself. So they are. So what are they? So it's all patterns, but it's all it's all question marks. It's very peculiar. <clears throat> But, you know, looking at this in terms of these sort of you know, big generalizations and sweeping aspects of it is, is interesting, but it's, it's not really productive. It's most productive to look at it very personally. What's going on with you? Where are you at? What do you come up against? What do you, you know? Yeah. That's where, that's where your personal rubber meets the road, and that's where you personally will find revelation. <clears throat> Again, it's nice to, to, to look at it from the perspective of the answers at the end of the book. But the, your, your, your issue is where are you in the book and what's going on there? When you mentioned that, I was just thinking that um, uh, <clears throat> one of the things I find most enjoyable about, about your words is that they are a legitimate attempt to express this impossible thing, but they're also, um, for me anyway, they're an invitation to check it out for myself. And that's really the, what the bottom line, like you just said. Absolutely. Because it's right here, it's right <laughs> obvious, but you have to <clears throat> stop you know, or check it, whatever, yeah. verify it. Yeah, find out for yourself. Yeah. You know, going to a spiritual talk and listen to someone spout this stuff that just sounds amazing. Okay, that's great fun and all that. But at the end of the day is, why aren't you up here doing the spouting? <laughs> and is that even for any... Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, most of those people who are talking, they're not inviting us to check it out. They're like, oh, inviting us to, here, give me some money and I'll help you out or something like that. I'll tell you. Well, uh, all of this, all of this is about your condition. Yeah. This is not about some great thing in the sky. This is simply about your condition right here, right now. This is it. Check it out. It's really cool. And checking it out is is a lot of fun, interesting, yeah. terrifying, exciting, 
and enormously, infinitely rewarding. <clears throat> that was what I was wanting to ask you, uh, this notion of terrifying. I've heard people speak about that. Um, I haven't had that experience. Not here. <laughs> So again, look what pops up. Am I missing something? Is there something that I'm not seeing? Is there something that I'm not looking where do I, where do I sign up to get the terror? I'm missing the terror. What, <laughs> what table do I have to go out to register for the terror? <laughs> I'm, this party is not good. I'm sure there's several people in the room who can help you out. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to terrify me? They'll be, they'll be, they'll be allowed to, to show you, to, to, fill you, to initiate you into the terror. <laughs> because you've said in the past that the void is nothing other than this unless I'm If there is a void, it's this. Yeah, exactly. And there are profound senses in which this is a, a void, this is the void. There's also profound senses in which this is whatever. So when people talk about uh, experiences of, I don't know how to put it because I've never had that, but kind of going to the edge of the void and then they feel like they're going to disappear. I mean I don't I don't know what that is. That is that um, people are people find a sense of security in their identifications and their interpretations. And when they see that their interpretations have no basis in truth and are in fact pure fantasy. It can be terrifying if they have their sense of security and sense of safety hinged upon these interpretations, and they can see they're about to be invalidated and stripped away. But of course, that that placing of safety and security in interpretations is foolhardy because there is no security and safety in interpretation. In fact, the only security and safety that exists is in reality. Is it that simple? Yes. I thought that they were physically experiencing some abyss that they were going to fall into. The abyss is the abyss of the horror of not knowing. That's it? Yeah, but you're a Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you live. <laughs> oh no, it's the opposite. <laughs> Sense that I that I'm missing something, and it's all wrong. It's it doesn't seem to be true. But, but see, the sense that you're missing something is a red flag that it's not true because it's seeming to be that way. Yes. Remember when I said anything that seems to be a certain oh, way, oh, okay. a particular way is a sure sign that it's not actually true. If it seems, if it seems to be specifically that, you are, that there is something that you are missing, then that's a red flag that it's not really like that, and that bears scrutiny. Yeah, you, because you can't know if you're missing something. You can't know if there's something or, or anything or nothing. You can't know anything because there is no answer to what is anything? The question of what is here has no answer. The question of what's going on has no answer. The question who are you has no answer. No question has any answer. Oh my gosh. So if you're coming up with answers, then clearly you're playing with fantasy. Mm -hmm.
The not knowing is just a really... Not knowing is true knowing. Mm-hmm. Not knowing is the certainty of knowing. But I can't even call it that. I mean, you can call it anything you want. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. It's... Um, when you hold that knowledge from the Lord, um, when you have that perspective, when it comes time to make a decision mm-hmm. of, of this or of that, a hamburger right. or a hot dog, um, uh, how do you then get into one decision or the other while understanding um, that uh, there is no answer to any question? Yeah, the same way you always have. <laughs> if you, there's never been an answer to any question, and you can still pick the hot dog and the hamburger, or the, or the tofu. So each of those decisions seems to lead me to unhappiness. Right. Um, so I would like to find a way that discernment doesn't lead to unhappiness. Okay. Well, well why, what, in what way did those decisions lead to unhappiness? Um, that there was a compulsion towards a sustenance to solve an issue of hunger. Right. Um, and it theoretically did, but only for a moment. Right. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm back to making my next decision three hours later. Right. And uh, another so hot dog or hammer <laughs> this time. <laughs> right. right. And uh, I find myself in the next moment between literally tonight will be chicken or pork. Um, but I'm going to arrive at that decision with uh, a perspective like um, these aren't real, I'm not real, we aren't separated, this is all connected, um, and I have, I, there is no benefit to either decision. Right. Um, there's a moment of paralysis in a situation like that. Um, and the only way to get out of it is to give in to believing I need one of these things. So Not necessarily. You can just stay with the paralysis and eventually it's a hungry that you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll pick one in spite of yourself. Right. Right. Jason Spengel, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> um, I mean, what you're looking at is that there is, there's no, there's no end, there's no finality, there's no final solution. There's endless openness, which leads to endless openness, which leads to endless openness. So in one instance, the openness might look like, gosh, I feel hungry, maybe I'll get some food. And so you get some food. And that openness opens to the openness of, well, now I feel a little bloated, I guess I'll go lie down. And then that leads to, well, I woke up, now I'm hungry, what shall I do? I mean, but, but the, the fantasy of, of some final resolution or the fantasy of some final solution that will result in some cessation is just that, a fantasy. What about the, the fantasy that either one is worth? Well, every, anything is worth the same as anything else. But that I mean, sounds like a zero. Well, it may be zero, but, but it's not a zero as contrasted with some positive number. It's just zero as an arbitrary value. I mean, what's the value of this? Here's this. What's its value? Is it great? Is it horrible? Is it a 10? Is it a zero? I mean, it's just arbitrary. It's, there's no answer. It, it just doesn't, that's not a relevant category for this. Mm-hmm. And this, that's never a relevant category. It's all just unfathomable. Then what if, what if unhappiness is also not on the scale of positive to negative, it's just unhappy, and it is the state that something's in. Sure. That is therefore 
the state of reality. Well, you can see that. Yes, that's ultimately true. But also, unhappiness is always um, due to misinterpretation. And misinterpretation can be addressed by seeing that it is inaccurate. If you're unhappy, it's because you wish things were different than they are. And that's predicated upon, number one, that you know how things are, which is which can never be true. This is, experience is fundamental, nothing's here but experience. And experience is fundamentally uninterpretable. It's fundamentally inconceivable. You can't pin down precisely what anything is or what's happening, ever. So that being the case, things are open-ended. Um, if you have an active imagination, and you pretend you can pin things down, and you say, oh, this is a really boring talk. I wish there was a more exciting talk, but there isn't anything around, <laughs> and you get pissed off, then there's a dissatisfaction. But the dissatisfaction doesn't arise from the moment. It arises from a reaction to this narrative you're telling yourself, basically a story you're telling yourself. Um, and you're reacting emotion emotionally or, or, or qualitatively to that narrative, not to the actual situation, which is a question mark. Yeah. Is this a good talk? Is it a bad talk? Is it boring? Is it interesting? You know, it's like, is that even, is that relevant? It's just weird. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know anything. I don't, is it good? Is it bad? Is it, I don't know. You know. It's kind of interesting, it's kind of strange, it's kind of boring, it's kind of, we've been sitting here for fucking hours. I mean, what's, <laughs> what's up with this, you know? And so in the face of that, it's just like, I don't know. I'm here. I guess I want to be here. You know. So there's an open-endedness there, which is interesting. You know, at first one might say it's unsatisfying, but in another sense one might say, but it's true, it's really honest. Whereas if I had some kind of a hard and fast, no, this sucks, I'm out of here, you know, is that really true? You know, or, or you, is that just another narrative, an oversimplification you're putting out there? So, I mean, the real solution to how to be artfully with experience is to be with that as it is, which is always an open-endedness. And in that open-endedness, there's an ambiguity which turns out to be delightful and useful because it's an ambiguity that, that, that is freedom. It's, it's a freedom of allowance of multiple values simultaneously. So then rather than it being good or bad, it's kind of both. It's kind of a, a full range all the time. And the same with, um, with you know, satisfaction or dissatisfaction, or happiness or unhappiness. You know, there's, there's a multiple value rather than, you know, this, this is terrible, I want that. It's like, I kind of like things, aspects about this, and I kind of don't like aspects about this. And I would kind of like aspects about that, I kind of wouldn't like aspects about that. So the whole thing opens up a bit into sort of multiple values rather than simple black and whites, good or bad, which is where the sort of hardcore sadness and frustration and dissatisfaction tends to come from. And this, this comes back to, or it touches on earlier, what we were talking about of the lack of coherence of the personality of the persona. You know, you're not a single person with single motivations. You're a hodgepodge of all sorts of conflicting motivations and urges that, that, that's, you know, that seize within you and come out from time to time. And they're all, in effect, part of you really likes something, another part of you really hates it, and the third, third part of you doesn't give a shit. And the fourth part of it is interested in something else entirely, and it's just, you know, daydreaming. And so, you know, it's not like 
oh, I feel this way about this thing. You feel a dozen ways about everything. You know, because people aren't that coherent. And again, if you notice the actuality of the complexity of, of your own energies, this becomes apparent. And so, you know, part of me hates this. Part of me loves this. You know, and so on and so forth. Well, that must, you must be talking about the smelling the fart thing or the shit thing because I don't, I mean, the only thing I really don't like is traffic going down to Columbia City. But there's not much anymore that I hate. I mean, I, I can't even think of anything off the top of my head. Right. Um, I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking about loving and hating. I'm talking about the fact that there's not hard, hard, and, hard and fast, coherent reactions to things. Reactions to things are always in the shotgun, shotgun spread of, of, of um, multiplicity. Which is again, neither here nor there. It's that in practice, it can loosen up the knee-jerk reaction of yeah. taking things um, unrealistically, simplistically, which can cause trouble in terms of, um, you know, feeding, feeding the ability to, to form these, these bothersome narratives. Yeah. Well, seeing any of those narratives, seeing all of these narratives is it's almost game over. Sure. <clears throat> and then in the absence of liking it, not liking it, um, or having a you know qualification about it. Yeah. And but, it, uh, but that doesn't mean so. For example, yeah, I, I was thinking about this the other day. So you know, so I'm driving along in the car. Windows are open on the freeway. It's, smoky, it's noisy. So it's like, okay, so this is this experience. And then the experience of rolling up the windows, turning on the AC, that's another experience. It's, it's, sure. it, maybe it's a preferable experience, sure. but there's, I don't know, there's options. Sure. <laughs> I don't know where this fits in. To what you're saying you're free to have preferences you're free to try to navigate your experience to whatever degree to go to what you think you enjoy more yeah why not yeah but when that happens what is it that's happening just this yeah so you're not gaining or losing anything you're just you just navigate into a slightly different texture of it yes so when you say i'm not gaining or losing anything in a way, some of what you're saying is there's no better or worse. It's just right. this preference. Yeah. So there is no better or worse. There's just this other preference, sure. which is all part of this. Sure. That's crazy. Wow. It's one more lovely way to just fade the this is better than that. And, and again, again. And again, even with preferences, you're not particularly coherent. You probably have a bunch of different conflicting preferences simultaneously. Like, I'm really enjoying doing this talk, but I'd really love to be home having a nap. They're both preferences I have. But I'm continuing to do this talk, so evidently I like that more. And in 20 minutes, I'm going to stop the talk and then go home and have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really say that I have those. I can't identify much levels of ambivalence. It's either. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. <laughs> okay. But there's always in all this, you know. 
we're talking about these various different aspects, this, that, and the other. It's really just about this right here, this and this here, what it is. So it couldn't be simpler. I mean, it couldn't be more weirdly complex because of the nature of what this is, the nature of the way this presents. But it's, but it's not actually complex because it's so simply this that is right here that is always exactly the way that it is. Experience is always experience, and there's nothing else. You know, we get confused about it largely because we ignore experience and think we concentrate on the objects and events and circumstances that we think are appearing in, ex in experience. But that's as backwards. It's the experience itself that is what's happening. It's the experience itself that is important and valuable. So yoga simply means to study experience. Look at experience itself and see what it is in the way that it is what it is. I mean, what could be simpler? You're an expert. You've been doing nothing else all your life or for, for timeless eternity. Your pick. Mm -hmm. One aspect of that uh, I've noticed is noticing the flow of experience and what is the sense of which way that experience is flowing? Is it flowing from the world to me, or is it flowing from here out? And uh, that difference in perspective is <coughs> to allow that sense of the experience is flowing <coughs> here in order to connect with the world. <coughs> Not by some person. Is that a question? Yeah. Just just flow from that centerless center, center. <coughs> into a reality that is known as a result of life, although there's no cause and effect. It's all happening simultaneously. <coughs> anyway. <coughs> <coughs> In the absence of thought about anything, just I mean, it's not that thoughts don't arise. There can be just random just words just popping up, just they have no significance for anything. But in the absence of thought about, there's just Yes. Good. And there's just this even when there is thoughts present. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just been noticing um, just these, and it's not no longer a problem. It's these little words that just kind of jump out like something just jumped out of a dictionary. Right. And it doesn't mean anything. Right. <clears throat> they really are like any other uh, phenomenon, aren't they? I mean, like part of the free way. It doesn't describe me. It's right here, but it's like same thing with thoughts. It just it's it's experiential. It's experiential qualities appearing. Yeah. It's like light. Light appears. Thought appears. Mm -hmm. Sound appears. Yes. yes. Nothing has any significance except the thing itself. What thought means is that thought is present. 
Just like what light means is that light is present. It's not about something else. That's that's the fallacy of thinking is that it is referential. Yeah. Thought is not referential. Thought doesn't refer to something else. It pretends to, it claims to, but it's a lie. Thought is about itself. That doesn't mean there's not intelligence, but intelligence is not related to thought. Intelligence is permeative of being itself. This is pure intelligence. You are you are an incredibly functional being, and you're not functional because of thought. You're functional because of intelligence, which is what you are. Yeah, in fact, I'm probably less functional because of paying attention to one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, thought is the thought is the stupidest mode of intelligence. The <laughs> perhaps, stupidest mode, perhaps. Yeah. That's a that's an amusing way to put it. Anyway. Like well, I think in anyone's case. The inherent intelligence requires no process. It's instantaneous. Bang. In the instant, it acts. I move my hand. I don't have to think about how to do it. I don't have to know which muscle to move or what neuron to activate or what, you know, chemical transmitters to have. It's just bang. Yeah. Instant. Total competence. It's inconceivable. And it's without process. It's in the instant. There's no premeditation. There's no planning. There's no... Let's see, I have, first I have to do this, then I have to do that, then I have to do that, then I have to do that. Now, okay, let me do it. It's nothing like that, it's just bang. It's almost like the equivalent of uh, thinking that I could somehow control the anatomic nervous system. All that, all that. Mm -hmm. And all functioning is like that. Yeah. You know, you hear that, you hear your car, you hop in, you drive away. If you had to figure out how to do that, you would not be able to even stand up out of the chair. <laughs> and yet, you effortlessly do all of that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very powerful intelligence. And thought is that same intelligence appearing as this intricacy of patterns in, in mentality. But it's just, I mean, it's a little trivial game. It's like playing Monopoly or something. It's a stupid game that the mind plays. Well, even imagining I'm making a decision, I've been noticing this and kind of playing with this. Uh, trying to decide, well, should I eat first or should I do that first? And just dropping it and then just what appears to happen is the body decides. Of course. That has been astonishing to me that this isn't deciding. The body's deciding which order to do things. Sure. If I just But you're calling it the body is just another narrative. It, it happens. All you can really say is it happens. Oh. So what you'd be saying is just innate intelligence that's just doing that. Whatever do, does everything is doing that. One thing does everything. One oh, thing yeah. is everything. And, the, and the, then the one thing that does everything and the one thing that is everything is one and the same thing. We have these complex verbal ways of putting it that there's doing and there's being, but that's the first absurd. This, but this is his obvious pure functionality, pure intelligence. Including my stupid thoughts. Of course. Everything. That's amazing. Thinking of John Cage, uh, he would incorporate the sounds of New York City into his compositions. Sure. Sounds that most we'd be annoyed by, and they were, he was writing them. Sure. Yeah. But what's so important about that is there doesn't have to be a decision. Of course not. And even making decisions isn't really making decisions. You don't decide what to decide. Yeah. It's like, let me see, I'm going to decide yeah. whether to get up or stand up or not. I wonder what I'm going to decide. Well, I mean, even the things you know, that we... I, and I, oh, <laughs> obviously I decided to get up. But I didn't decide to decide to decide to head up. It just happened. So if we hold deciding as a spontaneous occurrence, yeah. and the result of it is a spontaneous occurrence. 
If deciding was intentional, you'd have to, in advance of deciding, you'd have to decide you were about to decide. And then you would have to decide that you were going to decide to decide. And so when you were born, you would have to decide whether or not to be nodding your head right now. If it was intentional. But it's not like that. It's just an instant. It just happens. Well, I'm thinking about having, you know, people having to, you know, believing they have to make decisions about this or that. And my clients are always struggling with doing this or that. You know, every. It's much simpler than that. Just watch what you do and then you'll know what you decided. <laughs> I played with that a few years ago about getting out of bed. And what <laughs> I came to see was that the leg invariably got thrown over the side. And a split second, then the thought came up. And that was just kind of astonishing. I mean, it's much, it's much simpler to watch what you do to know what you decided than to worry about it in process. <laughs> that was just fun to see. Well, the far knows that. <laughs> She's she's a master. This! <laughs> this! That's the whole talk. <laughs> First. Place I find myself in. Curtain up. That moment when the curtain just lifts, people, <coughs> the action starts, the stage, that's <coughs> pure readiness for what is coming in this moment. Just <coughs> get it. Had the courage to ask if there are any coming. Fun? Yeah. Well, thank you all for joining me today. I'll be here tomorrow again. I said, here, not here. I'll be somewhere else tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Green Lake. Green Lake Library. Green Lake Library. Portland tomorrow, right? Green Lake Avenue North around 7 o'clock. Yeah. 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 Yeah.